Hello students, welcome back to this amazing learning platform and today we will be covering the second chapter of your English book First Flight and the title of the chapter is Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Rolishaza Mandela Let's answer the question first Question number one Why did such a large number of international leaders attend the inauguration? What did it signify the triumph of? Answer a large number of international leaders and dignitaries attended the inauguration as a mark of solidarity on behalf of an international community for the terminal of South Africa's years of appetite. It signified the triumph of good over evil and the triumph of a land which was under operation. Second question is, what does Mandela mean when he says he is simply the sum of all those African patriots who had gone before him. Answer: When Mandela says that he is simply the sum of all those African patriots, he pays tribute to all the patriots who have sacrificed their lives for the freedom and for their brave act to set the land free from operation. He is remembering those patriots who have long gone and commits to walk on their path for freedom. Third question. Would you agree that the depths of operation create heights of character? How does Mandela illustrate this? Can you add all your own examples to this argument? Answer is, I agree with the statement, depths of operation create heights of character without a shadow of doubt. Mandela has presented the fine examples of South African leaders like Oliver Tambo, Walter Cecilius, Yusuf Dadu, and others who possessed extraordinary courage, wisdom, and generosity for the freedom struggle. Our own country is full of examples of such great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Subhash Chandra Bose, Jawaharlal Nehru, Bhagat Singh, and many others who took courage to come forward and fought for the freedom of India from the operation of the Britishers at the cost of their own lives. Fourth question is, how did Mandela's understanding of freedom change with age and experience? Answer is, with age and experience, Mandela's interpretation of freedom changed completely. He learned that the freedom that he looked for during his boyhood was just an illusion. To obeying his father, to obey the customers of the tribe. As a student, he yearned for freedom to stay late at night, freedom to take decision. Later on, as a young man, his understanding of freedom changed to be free to raise a family and earn a livelihood. Gradually, he understood that it was not only his freedom which was curtailed, but the freedom of his whole community and it was then his hunger for freedom grew more. Question number five. How did Mandela's hunger for freedom change his life? The illusionary freedom of boyhood left Mandela's thoughts and he realized that the true freedom is to set his people free from the oppression. He transformed from a frightened young man to a bold one and joined African National Congress, sacrificing the comforts of his life to fight against racial prejudice. Now, we will move on to the exercise part under thinking about language. Okay, so the first exercise that we have is, there are nouns in the text like formation, government, which are formed from the corresponding verbs, which are form, govern by suffixing ION or MENT. There may be a change in the spelling of some verb, noun, peers, such as rebel, rebellion, constitute, constitution. So what we had to do is like we have to make a list of such pairs of nouns and verbs by looking from the text. Okay, so the two has already been done for us. Like rebellion, it's a noun and the verb is rebel. Okay, that way we'll complete the rest we have the first word we have is on noun we have imagination and verb is imagine 
Then we have inauguration and verb is inaugurate. Operation, verb is operates. Then domination, the verb is dominate. Okay. The second exercise is we have a passage. Okay. Read the paragraph below. Fill in the blanks with the noun forms of the verbs in brackets. So it's very simple as you can read from the question itself. What we have given is like in the brackets the words they are in the verb form. Okay. So what we have to do is like we have to change those in the noun form. First, I'll just tell you how to do is Martin Luther King's contribute. Contribute is a verb. Now we have to change it in the noun form. So that becomes contribution okay so that way we'll complete the whole paragraph martin luther king's contribution to our history as an outstanding leader began when he came to the assistance of rosa perks a seamstress who refused to give up her seat on a bus to a white passenger in those days american blacks were confined to positions of second class citizenship by restrictive laws and customs to break these laws would mean subjugation and humiliation by the police and the legal system beatings imprisonment and sometimes death awaited those who defied the system martin luther king's tactics of protest involved non-violent resistance to racial injustice that was easy right so in the next exercise we have uh, is idiomatic expressions so what we have to do is we have to match the italicized phrases in column a with the phrase nearest in meaning in column b okay so we'll just match the uh, following first is i was not mindful of the fact and second column b that's the correct option is first okay had not forgotten was aware of the fact so we'll just quickly do the rest of it. When my comrades and I were pushed to our limits, the answer is third, felt that we could not endure the suffering any longer. Third is to reassure me and keep me going. The correct is second, help me continue to live in hope in this very difficult situation. Okay, so the last one is the basic and honorable freedoms of ellipsis, earning my keep, ellipsis. The correct is earning enough money to live on. Okay, so that was all. So the next exercise we'll be doing is under the writing section. And first is looking at contrast. So it says Nelson Mandela's writing is marked by balance. Many sentences have two parts in balance. So what we have to what our task is here is we have to use the following phrases to complete the sentences given below. So it's a really e this an easy one, right? So what we have to do is we have to choose the correct phrases from the box and use it in the sentences below. So the first one is it requires such steps of operation to create such heights of character. It's easy, right? So we'll do the rest of the Second is, courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. Third is, the brave man is not who he does not feel afraid, but he who conquers the fear. Fourth is, if people can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. Fifth is, I was not born with a hunger to be free. I was born free. That was easy, right? Okay, so the last exercise here we have is this text com repeatedly contrasts the past with the present or the future we can use coordinated clauses to contrast two views for emphasis or effect given below are sentences carrying one part of the contrast find the other uh, find in the text the second part of the contrast and complete each of them identify the words which signal the contrast okay so we just have to find the another part of the sentence by uh, so that we can make a contrast okay so the first is for decades the union buildings had been the seat of white supremacy and now it was the site of a rainbow gathering of different colors and nations it's also easy okay so the next one is this only moments before the high journal of the south african defense force and police ellipsis saluted me and pledged their loyalty 
ellipses, not so many years before they would have not saluted, but arrested me. Okay, next is, although that day neither group knew the lyrics of the anthem, ellipses, they would soon know the words by heart. Next is, my country is rich in the minerals and gems that lie beneath its soil, but I've always known that its greatest wealth is its people. Now the next is, it was this desire for the freedom of my people, ellipses, that transformed a frightened young man into a bold one that drove a law-abiding attorney to become a criminal that turned a family-loving husband into a man without a home. So this exercise was pretty easy, right? So the next section of the chapter is a poem by Leslie Norris, A Tiger in the Zoo. So we'll do the question answer of it. So the first question we have is, Read the poem again and walk in pairs or groups to do the following task. First, find the words that describe the movements and actions of the tiger in the cage and in the wild. Arrange them into columns. Second is, find the words that describe two places and arrange them into columns. Okay, now try to share ideas about how the poet uses words and images to contrast the two situations. Now the answer is, words describing tiger's action in cage are stalks, few steps of his cage, quiet rage, locked in concrete cell, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors, he hears the last voice, stares at the brilliant stars. Now the words describing tiger's action in the wild, lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass, snarling around houses, bearing his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. Okay, then the next is, words describing cage are few steps of his cage, locked, concrete, behind bars, visitors, patrolling cars. Now these are words which describes wild, okay? These are shadow, long grass, water, hole, plump deer, houses, a jungle's age, and village. The next question is, notice the use of a word repeated in lines such as these. First, on paths of velvet quiet, in this quiet rage. Second, and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. What do you think is the effect of this repetition? Answer is, the poet uses such repetition in order to increase the tiger's rage and his helpless silence. Here, velvet quiet refers to his paws, which cannot run anymore, being locked in cage. The quiet rage is symbolic of his anger and rage to run freely. As a result of being locked in the cage, the tiger is keeping these feelings inside. The word brilliant symbolizes its magnificent character imagining his free life and longing to walk and run freely. The third question is, read the following two poems, one about a tiger and other about a panther, then discuss. Okay. So the question is, are zoos necessary for the protection of conservation of some species of animals? Are they useful for educating the public? Are there alternatives to zoo? Answer is, yes, zoos are necessary for the protection and conservation of some species which are on the verge of extinction as they are unsafe in the wild anymore owing to the hunting and poaching. Zoos are useful for educating the public about their habitat, their biological formation, which helps for many who want to specialize in such fields. It helps to educate the people their important role in maintaining a balance in the ecosystem. There are such as wild reserves, wildlife sanctuaries, and national parks, which are alternatives to zoos. That's all for today. I hope this video helped you with your preparation of the second chapter. Till then, goodbye. Mm -hmm.